So I put four to six inches of pretty good size, and then I have a bunch of exposed parts of my cover skirt. That's going down into the chamber there. Okay, so I'm actually super happy with how that turned out. It didn't take nearly as long. This pretty small sized version, and then I'm going to try to do a to be pretty happy with that. 50% nursery potting mix, which is side and peat, as you can see. Looks incredibly different, and I'm not honestly sure how. Keep watching and we'll talk about my latest agricultural horticultural project. The crack, crevice, scree, rock garden. So what you see here is the beginning stages of my attempts at building a concrete rubble based crevice garden, scree, rock garden. And I will say that I was totally inspired by Plant Delights Nursery, Juniper Level Botanic Gardens, Tony Avent's similar build. The concrete I had access to is not slabs. It's this pretty rough rubble with the aggregate inside of it is also really rough. In some ways I like this a lot better because I think from a distance it looks much more naturalistic. It's also gonna be a little bit more challenging to have this come together, but I do like it on the whole, especially from a distance, I really like the effect. So a couple things to talk about as we go through this. So let's just pace off the bed here a little bit so you get a sense of the size of it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, 10, 11, 12. I'd say it's 35 to 45 feet long. And at the widest point, both the back side here by this arborvita, which I grew from seed, and I started it about 15 years ago. And the center point here by this Camacyprus pacifera. This is actually the widest point if you measure from the point of the rocks to the opposite point of the rocks. But probably at this point, you're probably looking at about five feet wide. The actual planting area, obviously in the middle there, is more like 18 inches. And just some general thoughts about these pieces. So I'll move one here so you can see. All of them have one flat side at least, if not multiple flat sides. So this one, see, flat side, flat side, all right? So what I've tried to do is the largest flat side is on the ground. And that keeps these things stable. The heavier, larger pieces, like this kind of monstrosity here, these really big ones I put in the center, these are probably about 100 pounds. My kids are running and jumping on these rocks and they're quite stable, they're not going anywhere. So most of them are between 35 and 120 pounds, I would say. With a big flat side down, they're quite stable. I don't feel there's any strong need to bury these into the ground for stability's purpose. They're not going to really go anywhere and I'm not building some crazy giant structure. The highest point of this I intend to be right here and it goes down some to either side as far as the elevation. I think at most points the infill in the center is going to be somewhere between four and eight inches but I think at this high point here I'm gonna to try to work it up more like two feet, but I don't feel like that height is such that I need to bury these pieces into the ground in order to keep things anchored well enough to have things not move. Some other thoughts here about this. So I tried to keep this as naturalistic looking as possible. And the first way I did that is you try to keep the elevation of the rocks fairly consistent, right? So. As one merges into another one, I'm trying to have the, the rock next to it be approximately the same height. And it doesn't always work. These are so irregular and lumpy that it's not possible to have it be perfect, but I was just going to keep it as you know, reasonable as what was possible. In some spots, I'm pretty happy with it. Like this transition here, you know, these fit pretty closely together and that's definitely the idea 
you know, some of these here too, you can see the, they fit together pretty nicely. And once I have gravel and sand backfilled in here and I have this stuff planted and it sits out here and weathers and gets some lichens on it and so forth, I don't think it's gonna look terribly bad. The other thing is I'm trying to put the smooth faces inside or on the ground. So inside here, you can, you can see on the inside here, there are some smooth faces. On the back side, I did end up with some smooth faces back here and I tuck some smaller rocks in against them to try to hide that as much as possible. And then it also gives us some crevices that we can work with filling in and planting, which will hide it even more. So I also wanted to give this wider point at the back here a little more visual weight, a little more heft, so to speak, some more mass. So I made the foundation thicker here than what I did in the front where I made it a little thinner. So most of this I intend to backfill with first a layer of fairly coarse gravel or stones. And then on top of that, I'm gonna place some more of the concrete rubble and kind of arrange the concrete rubble in a way that's looks sort of natural and I can get some nice crevice features. So here where we have it high in the center, I do still have some more pieces that are fairly big like this and I can kind of work them in hopefully in such a way that it looks sort of natural and then do that in some other spots. I'm not sure I have enough pieces to do a complete like total crevice garden in the way that most of these are. I think there's spots where I'm gonna just have to wedge rocks in. The rocks won't go all the way down to the ground in some cases. I can maybe give you the visual effect, but it won't be a completely legitimate situation in some cases, but We'll do the best we can, use up a lot of this rubble. So let's talk about this, right? So I intend to make a reptile, most likely snake, in-ground hibernaculum here. So I'll document that to the best of my ability. I've been really frustrated at this property. I've never found a snake on the property here and we've been here 12 years now. Never found a lizard, been here 12 years. And that is frustrating for me. And I think the issue is there's just not enough exposed rock work, enough good places for them to hibernate, sun themselves, get away from predators like this girl. So we're gonna make a snake hibernacula. This is also an, a neat uh, chance to take a look at what the subsoil and soil is here like at our house. So. You can see there, the hole is about two feet deep. The frost line here, you should go two and a half, three feet, but I'm also gonna be mounding this up, sort of, uh, sorry, I'm gonna mound this up quite a bit. So I'm gonna gain another eight inches or another foot easily of uh, insulation and thermal mass on top of that. So I think when everything's said and done, I'll have three feet easy and I feel like three feet is quite good. The water line to our barn is buried at two and a half feet and it never froze even during the minus 12 and minus 16 degrees polar vortex winters. So I think I'm pretty safe going two and a half, three feet, especially with a lot of these big rocks as thermal mass. So I'll start documenting this here in a second. I did want to mention a few other things. So if you see here, most of our yard is on a pretty good slope. I'm not real worried here about the drainage because we're already at a nice angle here. And there's plenty of crevices and cracks in the rocks for water to flow away. And the planting media is going to be primarily sand and gravel with only a little bit of organic material thrown in. And I also wanted to mention the exposure here. So this garden if we're standing here looking out, this is basically directly southeast. This is excellent exposure and there's no big trees around here to shade this. So this spot has the most direct sunlight for the greatest portion of the day of any spot on the property. And I don't really intend for there to be big shade trees in this spot at any point. There are some small shade trees that are gonna fill in here some, but 
as far as large shade trees that matter, the closest one is there's a beach over there, which you can barely see. And that's been in the ground for 12 years and it's seven feet tall. Beaches don't grow very fast. So I think I'll be dead before the beach shades out this garden. So, all right, let's get to work here and see what we can do here. The first thing we're gonna do is fill the bottom up with gravel and then we'll put some pieces of rubble in there and kind of show you the idea here. So I've put four to six inches of pretty good sized stones. Most of these stones are like one or two inches in dimension. Now I'm gonna start putting things in. The base layer here is gonna be these concrete blocks, the cinder blocks. That crazy one I dug out of the creek near here. The other one is just in our barn, kind of in the way. And then I have a bunch of, I've got some punky logs, got some drain pipe, and I got a bunch more of this rubble. What I have here is a lot of rubble with bricks in it. And that one is a big piece of wood. This stuff looks fake, and I don't want to use any of this for any exposed parts of my crevice garden. So this is perfect. I set these pieces aside earlier for this kind of stuff. So I want to put the cinder blocks in as a good strong base and then work in some of this stuff around it and then we'll just fill back in. All right, so this is the basic, this is the basic guts or foundation of this. So I got two cinder blocks down in the bottom, sitting on top of four to six inches of gravel got corrugated drain pipe coming up out here that's the entrance and exit that's going down into the chamber there so now what we have to do is fill in around the drain pipe so that it's not going to collapse when we backfill and then fill in around the blocks to try to build some more cracks and crevices for critters to hang out in and then provide something pretty stable and sturdy so we can fill this back in again and then mound it up. We're gonna mound it up pretty good up on top here too. So well, let's look at that. This is a, it's a little better example of the rubble that we have to work with. So let's see what we can make here. Okay, so I'm actually super happy with how that turned out. It didn't take nearly as long as what I thought. So far the total time into this is maybe hour and a half, two hours max. And Real pleased with how this is shaped up. I think it's gonna hold up really good. And now I just need to backfill with gravel and then fill it up real high on top with gravel. It is early August, 2021. Going to do an update on the crevice garden construction. I had to halt any work on the crevice garden for various reasons, mostly being too busy in spring and summer we're finally getting to a point here where i can try to work on this again so i have all the rocks in place and i need to fill in planting media into this bed which i'm going to work on right now the planting media i've decided on is this pretty small sized crushed limestone and nursery planting media. We're gonna mix these together about 50-50 and then I'm gonna put it in here. So I'll show a couple demonstrations and then I'm going to try to do a time lapse at least on some portion of this. So I've got this mixed up now to where I want it to be pretty happy with that possibly it could use a little more stones but I think the drainage here is going to be pretty good I have put down a nice layer of this planting media which again is 50% crushed limestone gravel and 50% nursery potting mix which is sphagnum peat composted pine bark perlite and kind of tamp things in lightly. I plan to go back now with a broom and rearrange things with the broom 
and then come back in and top things off with just a layer of straight gravel. Looks a lot different now. So I got this bed finished. I topped everything off with a nice thick layer of this finely crushed gravel. As you can see, it looks incredibly different and I'm not honestly sure how I feel about it at this point. Hopefully it will grow on me. Also, I certainly don't consider this the finished product. It needs to get rained on, which I think if we have some good rain here in the fall, it will compress everything down by probably two inches and it'll end up exposing a lot more of the underlying rock and also some of the rock will get washed away here and there, make things look more naturalistic. Just very raw and fresh looking right now. And of course we need to get plants in it I may add a few of the really hardy Opuntia type cacti or Sempervivums this fall, but I'm not planting anything until after we've had several inches of rain and this had a while to settle. And realistically, most of the real rock garden, alpine, crevice garden type plants, I don't intend to plant in here until this coming spring, probably more like April, May. So this can just settle down and relax. But now the reptile and amphibian hibernaculum in this portion has easily had another, probably close to another foot of material piled up on top. So I think they're certainly quite safe at this point in that thing. And then once we get even more vegetation up there, this is gonna be a lot of cactus. That'll even just build up more insulation over there so crevice garden build coming along really nicely mid-august 2021 thanks for watching i would like to explain a little more my thoughts on the reptile hibernaculum build aspect of the crevice garden. So the area directly in front of me is where the hibernation chamber is buried. And you can see the bricks here. Hopefully that gives you some sense of a scale here of what I've heaped this up to. I think we have pretty close to two feet heaped up above the previous ground level. So I'm very confident that the hibernation chamber is Definitely buried by three feet of total material. Plus, let's talk about the cactus. And I wanna put mostly cactus in here because my youngest son loves cactus and I certainly don't mind it as well. I've built up a nice collection of winter hardy cactus and I wanna put them in here. And the cactus will also help with providing cover for reptiles. The bricks here, I put them in place there so that I didn't cover up the hole, the entrance and exit hole. I wanted to make it uh, such that the physical structure of the concrete rubble was providing a lot of it. Let's move these bricks away so you can see how this actually is set up. Okay, and then I'll, I'll explain that a little better. So this is what the entrance to the hibernation chamber looks like without the bricks. And they were there to keep me from filling up the entrance with gravel. So hopefully you can understand physically how this has been constructed. I wanted to make sure that the corrugated plastic drain pipe wasn't crushed. So I have it surrounded by rubble in such a way that the rubble is providing the physical support for the planting media and gravel over top. Let's see if we can, I don't know if you can actually see in there at all, but this is, it's not a huge entrance, but it's certainly big enough for a snake or a lizard to get into. I wanted to make it of a size that it was accessible to reptiles, but not so big that it's going to be attractive to 
larger things, certainly not larger predators, although I would think potentially you could get something like a small weasel or a rat in there. But we'll see how it goes. But I think it looks pretty good. My intention here is to get some cactus that trail downward, some of the opuntias that are more of a ground cover type, and they can kind of cover that partially. And I think the thorns on those would be a deterrent to mammals in a way that they wouldn't be to reptiles. So hopefully that can work. It's probably not obvious there, but I can see the corrugated plastic drain pipe inside there. So the system seems to be working as it should be. I'd also like to add, I redid this garden this spring and converted it into a pollinator garden. And you notice the edging here is conifer logs. It's pine and spruce, mostly. When we go around the side here, you notice the edge gets wider, right? Okay, so this entire area here that we're looking at, the wide curved edge here, this is another reptile or amphibian hibernaculum that I made this spring. This one I used all wood though, instead of using any plastic or masonry, bricks or concrete. The wood in the bottom, I used fresh locust and the locust pieces had rotten centers and I put the logs in as sort of like pipe pieces, tile pieces, so to speak and some of those pieces come up pretty close to the surface. And then I just filled in with pieces of the conifer wood and then just rammed bark, um, mulch and um, wood shavings, wood chips, sawdust everywhere else. And this is also a full sun site that has lots of good drainage here. And I dug this down. This one I dug down quite deep. I think I actually did this one three feet deep, and then you can see it's heaped up maybe six or eight inches up above. So I'm a little bit curious to see which one ends up being preferred or if any of them are ever found. You can see there's some little cracks and crevices and holes there that are potentially entrance and exit holes. I mean, maybe these would be useful for something like the small burrowing snakes that we have around here. Uh, like decay snakes or brown snakes, or ring neck snakes, I don't know. Maybe some of the uh, mole salamanders and lungless salamanders, I'm not sure. But the other thing this could be is it'll certainly end up becoming a hugel mound for the perm permaculture people, hugel culture. So, and I think as time progresses, that'll be a really good uh, moisture and nutrient holding site here. So. Uh, it's yet another hibernaculum. You can do it more than one way, and I'd be curious to see which way ends up being better. But both of them have been incorporated as part of the landscape. And then I've got, yeah, the pollinator garden to try to benefit pollinators, which has been extremely successful as well. So we're trying to benefit a lot of wildlife. And then I think the wood edges are really excellent too because it's providing a lot of potential nesting sites for a lot of insects. So trying to do a lot of good here. Okay, thanks for watching.